one of the questions I get a lot, both through Datadog and just people on social media and at conferences is, how does the code that I provide impact the cold start time of my Lambda function? So I've been investigating that. The container images have really piqued my interest because earlier this year, Mark Brooker and the Lambda team put out this amazing paper about how the Lambda team made container image-based Lambda functions run and execute and start as quick as a zip function can start. And while I don't see that 100% of the time consistently, I do see some really impressive data. And what they're doing in a container image is two parts, I think, that are most important. The first is they're doing something called convergent encryption, and then they're doing a tiered cache. So convergent encryption, the idea is when you push an image to ECR, uh, and then you attach it to a Lambda function, or you deploy a Lambda function with that image, it will divide all of your container image into 512 kilobyte chunks, and it will uh, encrypt them in such a way that they can consistently hash and compare 512 kilobyte chunks with other customers. So what we can do is very clearly understand the parts that are shared with other people of which is super common, where um, most people are using common base images. Maybe you're using you know, the, the provided AL2 uh, uh, base image or using like the, the Node.js base image or Python base image. Hundreds and hundreds of customers are doing the same thing. So instead of having to copy each of those different containers, uh, it, container images from each of those different customers' uh, repositories, when a function loads, they're able to say, okay, 90% of these chunks we already actually have on the worker. Actually, I think the, the cache density is really interesting here. Um, so if we take a look, I'll, I'll pull up the paper. They, they do an L, a, a three-level cache, right? So, so this is the paper. Um, it is called... On-demand container loading in AWS Lambda, uh, Mark Brooker, Mike Danilov, Chris Greenwood, uh, and Phil Pivanka. Pivanka, sorry if I got your name wrong, Phil, um, wrote this paper. And it, it's awesome. It came out earlier this year. Definitely read it. They're talking about why container images are more, more complex to load. So the first is that conversion encryption uh, deduplication without trust, where we can share chunks of data. And, and that way, not all of these bytes have to be streamed into the sandbox when they start. The second thing they do is a tiered cache. And this is where the real magic, I think, happens for this cold start time to be so low with a custom runtime or container image. Um, so there's a worker level cache, an L1 cache. Then there's also a cache in an availability zone. So for every region that's divided into like three or more AZs, each AZ or each physical building, physical data center has a cache in it for container image chunks. If that chunk isn't there, then we go to the source, which is uh, an S3 bucket. The AZ cache, they say, is uh, pretty standard. It's a uh, least recent used um, algorithm, and it's just fun uh, fetching those chunks over HTTP2. Uh, one is in memory for hot chunks, and then a flash tier for colder chunks. So you get this trimodal distribution where somewhere between, say, 50% and 90% of your container image is already on that machine when you when you upload your Lambda function. And actually, I think the key takeaway here is that 80% of everything you upload to Lambda, if today you create a brand new container-based Lambda function and put your own dependencies in it, put your own project in it and upload in it, 80% of those bytes you upload, AWS has already seen and it's already cached, which is amazing. That's a, such a great stat. So you have this really high cache density or cache hit uh, in uh, Lambda, which is why they're able to, to load these very quickly. So to bun, getting to bun, to answer your question, what we did uh, to improve on the current times that we've seen for cold starts is kind of three things. The first, you can provide bun as a binary and actually they already publish, they publish a script in their repo so you can create a Lambda layer for bun. So it's really easy to grab like a runtime.ts file that integrates with the rapid client in the AWS Lambda runtime. So you can kind of get that that drop-in experience you're used to as a developer where you just write a handler.ts or handler.js file and it will invoke it when it needs to be invoked. That's one part of it. Um, they already provide that. So the second part that we can do in the layer or we, we can do in, in the container image and in the layer is they, they compile the bun runtime along with the Lambda runtime code they write. And you can do that with bun build dash dash compile. So that will embed the bun, bun itself along with your runtime code uh, in a binary. So that's one thing we do to improve it. The second thing we do is when 
me as a customer uploads like the handler.ts file that we're used to uploading, which is just exporting a, an async function like you would normally do in JavaScript, is we can actually pre-build that for Bun. And we can even build that into all of it. So you have, it's like a, it's a kind of a step beyond tree shaking and bundling like you're used to where it, it will actually pre-generate the bytecode that Bun needs to run your, your Lambda handler up front. So that's how we can really improve the performance. And then the big, the big gap or the big jump in performance and getting down to that 120 millisecond at best cold start has been just using a container image because we know we can take advantage of these this caching strategy, which um, isn't the same strategy or isn't the same um, same level of sophistication that they have for zip files or for Lambda layers. So yeah, at, at best, we saw 120 milliseconds. We've also seen, we've kind of seen them all over the board um, with with no additional code. You know, we, we've seen cold starts as, as long as one second, which is you know pretty typical, right? Like those bytes have to hit that AZ cache and also have to get onto the worker. But once they're on that worker, if you have a repeat cold start, maybe in that node or at least in that AZ, we're seeing really low cold starts, 121 milliseconds, 359 milliseconds, 136 milliseconds and so forth. Um, that obviously changes as you, as you add dependencies. Uh, however, it's, it's, Telling me that if you really want to use Bun, you it's definitely viable in Lambda today.